Hi, this is Jessica. Welcome back to Embodied Collective with Jessica. I'm so glad that you're here. So today we're going to be talking about time. How do we create more of it? And how do we resolve uh, any conflicts or negative beliefs that we may have Moving surrounding? On, I also want to state that there are some seasons of life where time seems like it really is just escaping us and we really don't have control over it. So perhaps you are a new parent or um, you're experiencing a really significant loss. Of course, those are their own situations. So I'm not implying that um, this is applicable to every situation, but this is applicable to most situations in analyzing our relationship with time our and working culture, to heal it. The idea and the concept of busyness is idolized. Um, time is such a precious commodity and I think it's one thing that for myself, I haven't realized how precious it is until I've gotten older. So the older I've gotten, the more I've realized how precious time is. Um, speak with someone 20, 30, 40 years older than you and you'll realize right away that time is fleeting and it is precious and not something to be wasted. So time is money. Time is a valuable, valuable resource. Do you ever realize that whether you have three months to complete a deadline or a project or three weeks to complete a deadline or a project, no matter what, you make the time and spend that amount of time creating. So what does that mean? That means that we can create more time in our lives if something is truly important to us. So if something's truly important to us, we really are able to create more time in our lives. So typically, the statistic is that um, from an average eight hour workday, employees typically work about four hours a day. So about 50% of that eight hour workday is spent actually being productive. The other half of the day is spent essentially wasting a lot of time. So how do we find that, that we may have these negative thought patterns around time? We can then work to change them. So we can, when we identify that we're having these negative beliefs or when we catch ourselves in a thought about time, um, we can rephrase that thought. So we can turn it into time is of abundance. Time is on my side. Time is always working for me. So this can start to change the way that we view time. And when we change the way that we view time, more time appears to us in our life. Now, I also want to make um, a disclaimer here in that when we identify our negative thought patterns around time, we also may become aware of instances when we are saying yes to too many things in our lives. So this may also bring up the fact that we may need to start setting some boundaries in our life. We may need to start saying no to certain things if they don't fill us up. Um, and that will also empower us to have more time available um, and um, the, we can then therefore um, utilize more time to do those things that do feel that we can time. work to heal our relationship with time is by bringing our attention to the ways in which we may choose to procrastinate. So this can be huge. Um, and for each person, it may be a little different. So perhaps it's scrolling through social media or watching television. So whatever that looks like to you, and I'm sure that you know your preferred method of procrastination, um, bringing your awareness to that. When we are aware of a negative thought pattern or um, behavior pattern, that's where the power is. So once we're aware of it, then we can actually change it. If we're not aware of it, then we can't change it. So becoming aware of that procrastination kind of go-to and then identifying when we start to fall into that pattern. 
And then when we actually um, are setting aside time to focus completely on our task at hand or on our goal, we can ensure that we are setting ourselves up for success. So we're setting ourselves up in an environment where those procrastination distractions do not exist. Way that we can begin to heal our relationship with time is to perform time chunking or time blocking. So when we look at a, a project overall, that seems really overwhelming. Um, it's going to take many hours and days, perhaps weeks or months to complete. So when we time block, we are blocking off chunks of time, maybe half an hour, um, where we solely focus on one task. So at this point, we have already recognized our preferred procrastination methods, and we set ourselves up in an environment where those do not exist. So maybe that's putting ourselves on do not disturb, so we don't receive any emails, we don't receive any texts or notifications, maybe the phone is put in a drawer or in a completely separate room. Um, if TV is our preferred procrastination method, maybe we're going outside or someplace externally where we don't have that, we don't even have access to that distraction at all. And for that amount of time, we are solely focused on that task at hand. So another way in which we can heal our relationship with time and create more of it is by taking breaks. So this may seem counterintuitive, but after we have completed our time chunking or time blocking, we want to reward ourselves, give ourselves um, a break. And by giving ourselves breaks, we fill ourselves back up again. That gives us more energy to be more productive when we go back into our work. So whatever fills you up, whatever speaks to you, maybe that's taking a walk, maybe that's getting a nice cup of tea or coffee um, or texting a friend, um, whatever that looks like to you, making sure that we're creating space in our life and in our day to take The last breaks. thing I need to talk about when we're talking about time is an extremely important topic and that is identifying if you are chronically late. So what does your relationship with time look like if you are constantly late? So just take a moment, maybe analyze this, maybe ask a friend or family member if this is you, if maybe you're unsure. Um, so if you are always late to work, meetings, social gatherings, etc. Um, that's a really big indication that perhaps you have some healing work to do with your relationship with time. Um, and this is an indicator that you don't value your own time and that you don't have a healthy relationship with time in your own life. And on top of that, you also don't value other people's relationship with time. Um, so that's something to take a look at and analyze and then make some steps in your world to create more time for yourself and for others. That's time that you can be spent building relationships with others, whether it's your coworkers and a meeting or um, other special relationships in your life, like with your friends and your family. you found this helpful or insightful, um, what does your relationship with time look like? I would love to hear from you. So until next time, this is Jessica with Embodied Collective with Jessica.